Hi, I'm Marianne Mosley from the Pelican Players, and our Reader's Theater is proud to present Old Time Radio. Today's selection is called Mr. Sycamore. Enjoy the show. Welcome. Tonight, Pelican Players, your local community theater for the Sun City Center, Ruston, Waimama, and surrounding area, has the pleasure of entertaining you with another show by the Pelican Players Radio Theater Troupe. The cast is made up of local residents. We will introduce the cast following tonight's show. And now, tonight's performance. Mr. Sycamore was first broadcast in 1937 by the Columbia Workshop. It is a dramatization of Robert Ayer's unusual short story about a mailman who is tired of walking up and down the streets and steps of his small town. In 1975, the story was also adapted for the big screen and starred Jason Robards, Sandy Dennis, and Gene Simmons. And now, here is our presentation of Mr. Sycamore. Mr. Oikel. Five minutes late, Mr. Quilt. Five minutes, Mr. Oikel. Hmm. Seems to me, after 20 years practice and walking you around, you'd know it. 20 years, Mr. Oikel? Yes. Oh, by the way, a, a collection was taken up by some of the people on your route. They bought this for you and, and asked me to present it. Today is your 20th anniversary with the service. Oh, thank you, Mr. Oikel. Now, a fine picture. Uh, neither snow nor rain nor gloom nor fear of night stays these couriers from the swift completion of their appointed rounds. Yes, yes, it says swift completion. See that you start the second 20 off by making your rounds on time tomorrow. Yes, Mr. Oikel. More coffee, dear? Uh, yes, Jane, I will have a little more coffee. Pass your cup. Here you are. Tired, dear. Not more so than usual, Mrs. Wilt. Did you have a hard day? An average day up and down the streets of Smeed, up and down the stairs of Smeed. Drink this coffee, John. You'll feel better. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Gwilt, uh, how long would you say I've been plotting the streets of Smeed, up and down, rain and shine, day in and day out? Well, offhand I'd say about 18 years. 20 years. 20 years of tramp, tramp, tramping all day long. Well, all postmen have to do that, don't they, John? Yes, Jane, all postmen have to do it, but I've had my fill of being a postman. What do you mean, John? I made up my mind to... Stand still for the rest of my life. Stand still? I'm tired of locomotion. Jane, I intend to become a tree. A tree, dear? A tree. Uh, very well, John. What's to be, will be. The house is paid for. There's a little money in the bank. And I've kept up the insurance. Perhaps I could take up a few piano pupils. Oh, that will not be necessary. You will be well provided for. Yes, I suppose so. When do you intend? I mean, when are you going to... Uh, make the change? Yes, dear. Well, there's nothing to be gained by putting it off. Spring has come. The time is now. This very minute. I think we'd better go out to the yard and get started before it's too dark. You know best, John. 
Uh, get that bucket from under the sink. Yes, dear. Uh, fill it with water from the kitchen tap. Yes, dear. Oh, where did I put the spade? Oh, here it is, behind the door. Uh, bring the bucket, Jane. I have the spade. Yes, dear. Uh, come along, Jane. No, oh, this clothesline will have to come down. But why, John? I want plenty of room to spread my branches. But, John, dear, where am I going to hang? You'll have to find another place. Come along. I hope you're not going to be a very big tree. This garden is small enough. Leave that to me. Where do you want to be planted? Uh, right here. Uh, in the center of the yard. When I'm fully grown, I should just about reach Fred Stain's fence. Fred Stain's is coming now. You'd better tell him. Never mind Fred Stain's. Remember, I won't have you fastening any clothesline to my trunk. You'll have to find some other way. What are you putting up this year, Mrs. Gwilt? I'm taking a shot at dahlias myself. Don't answer him. You'll need to make that hole fairly deep. Not too deep. Uh, once I get rooted, I'll Yo, get... What on earth are you digging a hole there for? Are you burying something? No, we're not burying anything. Well, that's good. I thought maybe your cat, Solomon, was dead. Solomon is not dead. Well, what are you planning then? Oh, I wish he'd go away. I said, what are you planning? We're planting John. You're planting what? John is tired of marching up and down Smeed with the mailbag, Fred. He's decided to turn himself into a tree. A what? A tree. Well, I'll be a dog. Certainly is an original idea. I'll go and tell the wife. She'll be interested. <laughs> so long. So long, Fred. Wait till he starts that tale in his barbershop. You'll have everybody in Smee. I don't care. There, I think the hole's deep enough. I'll get in. Be careful, John. Uh, but there we are. Uh, look, Jane, it comes halfway up to my shins. My roots will strike down deeper, of course. Now, uh, take off my shoes and socks. John, you're not going to undress. Not until I get my bark. I'll just roll my trousers up to my knees. Yeah, that's it. Oh, how good the earth feels to the feet. So cool. What shall I do with the water, dear? Uh, wait a minute. First, I'll scrape the soil towards me. I've got to get it well packed around my feet. There, that will have to do. And now pour the water all around me. Yes, John. Oh, it's, it's cold. John, dear, are you sure you're doing this right? Yes, of course. Now, kneel down and pat the earth around my shins. But, John, dear, I thought that only God could make... Let's not go into that, and please never quote those abominable verses. I hope you're not doing anything sinful, John. That's all. You leave that to me. Here, take my glasses. I won't need them anymore. The shoes we may send down to the post office. The shoes belong to the post office with my compliments. But I can do what I like with my feet, and I'm never going to make them walk again. Uh, how does it feel, John? Oh, hello, he's back. And Mrs. Staines, too. You've no idea how comfortable the cool soil is on my feet, Fred. How long do you expect it to take, Mr. Gwilt? Oh, I can't tell you to the hour, Mrs. Staines. Not long. Won't you get tired standing? No more tired than I have been walking these 20 years or more. When I'm well-rooted, I won't be tired. Did you ever hear of a tree getting tired? What I can't understand is how you're going to do it. I passed my correspondence course with honors. <laughs> well, if that doesn't beat all. They give a course now on how to turn yourself into a tree. Don't be a fool, Fred. He means the willpower course, Fred. How to cultivate the will in 20 lessons. Willpower, eh? You're doing it by willpower? To my way of thinking, it seems... Irreligious. There, John, I told you. Hush, Jane. Uh, Mrs. Staines, I don't think you'll find anything in your Bible against it. Well, I'm sure we all wish you well, Mr. Gwilt, though I won't admit I understand it. Come along, Fred. Goodbye, Mrs. Gwilt. Goodbye, Mrs. Staines. Yeah, good luck, John. Uh, thanks, Fred. I'll go in and fetch your hat, John. You haven't much hair, and you might catch cold. Oh, never mind that. I'm not going to make a fool about myself. 
Uh, you just better get inside, Jane, and do your dishes. Leave me out here to concentrate. Very well, John. Now, if you need anything, just call. I won't need anything, Jane. <sighs> Such a balmy evening, robins singing, and that pleasant fragrance from down the lake, burning leaves. What smell is sweeter than... Than bur burning leaves, dear? Oh, yes. Perhaps it is a little indelicate for a future tree to enjoy the smell of burning leaves. A little bit ghoulish. Well, I'm going in, John. Just call. Yes, I know. Oh, that robin on the telegraph pole, lively little fellow. But I must concentrate. Goodbye, John. Goodbye, Jane. How do you feel, John? You've been out two hours. I find I'm getting a little fatigued. I'm, I'm, I'm not used to it, you know. Uh, you might bring me the one of the kitchen chairs. But you'll grow crooked. Well, well, yes, I suppose that is true. I must get used to standing. Is there any change yet? I think my toes are striking root. It's your rheumatism. I'm afraid you'll catch your death of cold. Nonsense, Jane. I'll soon become weathered and... Oh, uh, bet stiff. Hey, John? Nothing to speak of. Oh, you'll be stiffer before morning. Paper says a drop in temperature. I expect to be stiffer. Well, what are you going to do in the winter? It's a long time till winter, Fred. But I'll do what the other trees do. Hibernate. I won't be stoking any furnaces, and I won't be plowing through snow drifts and galoshes and overcoat. Well, good night. Don't let the boll weevil get you. Uh, the boll weevil doesn't attack trees. It may, I mean, it may happen before I wake up in the morning. Haven't you anything to say, John? Nothing except that I'll find rest at last. John! No, no, Jane, you've been a perfect wife. It's just that I want to live in my own quiet way, calm and spacious, long, serene years before me. Delicious stirring of my sap in the spring, spreading my leaves against the sunlight in summer, the first nip of autumn's frost, and winter with its long, deep sleep. Very well, John, but perhaps the change will be harder than you expect. What John Gwilt has begun, John Gwilt will end. Very well, dear. Good night. Good night, Jane. Oh, how does it feel after a night of it, John? Pretty chilly, eh? <laughs> it, it might be worse. <gasps> John! John! Oh, John, how are you, dear? I'm fine, Jane. I'm about to... <gasps> Let me feel your forehead. Oh, John, don't you think you'd better put this off until the weather gets warmer? It's going to rain, and you'll catch your death of cold. No, I won't catch my death of... <gasps> All right, John, all right. I suppose you do know. Can you take any nourishment? A bowl of cornflakes, perhaps? Cornflakes? Who ever heard of a tree eating cornflakes? Well, I have some bacon and eggs on the stove. I can bring them out to you. Ah, that's more like it. Bring me the bacon and eggs and uh, quarts and quarts of coffee. I'll get it right away, and I'll bring the card table to make it more comfortable for you. Hurry up, Jane. No frills now. All right. Are you going to lean on the fence and stare at me all day, Fred? Aren't you going to your barber shop? Yeah, oh, plenty of time. And stay till it starts to rain, Conf anyhow. Confound it. Like going into a monastery, isn't it, John? Renouncing the human race. I don't care what happens to the entire human race, Fred Staines. I wash my hands of it. Oh, talking of washing your hands, John, <laughs> what do you intend to do? A little dirt won't hurt me. After this, I'm part of the earth. Well, I must get along to the barber shop. Oh, so long, John. I think you'll be getting your wash whether you want it or not. It's starting to rain. I think that I should... 
shall never see. A poem lovely as a dream. Pelican Players Radio Theater Troupe will conclude tonight's show in a moment. But first, Pelican Players is your local community theater in the greater Sun City Center, Ruskin, Waimama, and surrounding area, celebrating its 40th year of providing live entertainment. Pelican Players consists of all volunteer, local talent on stage and backstage, performing in our main stage, Reader's Theater, Cabaret Singers, Mystery Theater, Make em Laugh Comedy Troupe, Twig Theater, and Radio Theater Productions. Pelican Players is a 501c3 nonprofit organization supporting Hillsborough County students in the arts. To date, we have donated approximately $600,000 to this endeavor. We always welcome new members performing or helping behind the scenes. Even though headquartered out of Kings Point, you do not have to live in Kings Point to become a member or attend performances. For more information, visit our website, www.pelicanplayersscc.org. And now, Pelican Players Radio Theater continues with tonight's performance. Well, um, a little bit more off the top, fam. Well, as I was saying, there he was, stuck in his backyard like a scarecrow, <laughs> pulling a blanket around him so as not to get soaked by the rain. Oh, getting a bit thin at the crown, Sam. Like to try some uh, new tonic I just got in? Well, uh, Gwilt said that trees had the right idea. Oh, it's a marvelous tonic, Sam. Can't go far wrong. What say, Pratt? You should have planted himself head down. <laughs> well, I think he was afraid of turning into a telegraph pole. He's uh, doing it by willpower. Well, I guess he can will anything away. Except dandruff, Mr. Pratt. I just got in to swell dandruff eliminator. I think you might try... Hey, how long are you going to keep us waiting? You ought to be showing signs by now. <laughs> <laughs> tweet, tweet, tweet. Do you mind if I perch on your branches? <laughs> <laughs> Better put on your socks or your roots will wither. <laughs> <laughs> Better get in there with him, Mrs. Quill. Keep him company. <laughs> Here's a piece of mud for your dinner. <laughs> Here's some more to build a nest with. <laughs> Go, you gibbering fools. Go on, laugh. There's more dignity in one tree than in a whole pack of chimpanzees. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Hold your umbrella before your face, John. It'll protect you from the brutes. Brainless apes, chattering yahoos. They can't do much as long as they stay on the other side of the fence. Oh, John, look who's coming. Make way, make way, let me through, let me through. It's Harry Oikel. Whatever will he say? What do I care what Harry Oikel says? I don't give a hoot for Harry Oikel anymore. But what about your job, dear? He's the postmaster, and he can take it away. What do I care for the postmaster now? I have a different job. Well, Gwilt, what's all this foolishness? Come, man. Pull on your socks. Get off to work. It's ten o'clock. I have something better to do, Mr. Oikel. Rubbish. You're making yourself the laughing stock of the town. Only fools laugh at wise men, Mr. Oikel. So, you consider yourself a wise man, do you? <laughs> oh! <laughs> I, I, I suppose you know what we do with wise men, Mr. Wilk. I won't budge an inch. I'll wait right here. You will never catch me. Bah, you're a fool. 
Morning, Mr. Oiko. Might have known you'd be along. Remember, the post office is not responsible for Mr. Gwill's idiocy in the slightest way. Not in the slightest way. What's the idea? D- doing it for for a bet? Uh, what use has a tree for money? Then why are you doing it? Who wants to know? Well, you know who I am. No. My name's Hoop, editor of the Smith Sun. Oh, I see. You want to put a piece in your paper about me. You guessed it. It isn't every day a man turns himself into a tree. (laughs) Naturally, the the public's interested. I'm not seeking publicity. No, no, of course not. Uh, I get it. The wife, eh? Storm and strife. Poise and repose. Harried husband seeks her cease. Not just domestic relations have nothing to do with it, Mr. Hoop. Jane and I... Uh, uh, Just tired of life, eh? If I was tired of life, I could blow my brains out. That's true, too. It isn't as simple as a straight suicide. I love life, but I don't like the life I've been forced to live in the past 20 years. I'm a man of contemplative disposition. I get it. Philosopher, eh? Well, naturally, to a man of my disposition, there comes a time when he wearies of the hurly-burly. That's right. I always go fishing myself. Uh, You're not making notes, Mr. Hoop. Do you remember all your interviews? Don't worry. I won't misquote you. What gave you the idea of turning into a tree? I just want to stand still. Ask me. I think you're just plain tuckered out, Mr. Gwilt. I want to go on living for a thousand years, watching Smeed grow up around me. Uh, You know, it mightn't be a bad idea for the town to set a sanctuary around you. A sanctuary? Around me? Yes, by golly. Great possibilities in the idea. You'll uh, you'll be a great tourist attraction. I'm not fond of crowds, you know. Oh, listen to me, Mr. Gwilt. You'd like to be a benefactor of Smeed, wouldn't you? You'd like to go down in history. Before I get through, the whole civilized world will be flocking to Smeed to see you. Think of the business it'll bring to the town. Of, I mean, railways, hotels, filling stations, hot dog stands... Souvenir stores. By golly, Quilt, you'll be the making of Smeed. You never thought of that, did you? Well, I I, I don't... Uh, We'll put a brass plate on your chest, telling the whole story for posterity. We'll have the mayor out for the dedication ceremony in his silk hat. I'll get you to to, to rustle your leaves for the donkeys. We'll have a bang-up parade, flags, banners, floats. Can't you just leave me as I am? Well, I tell you, we got to do things in style, you know. Let me see... I've got it. We'll have a picked chorus of high school girls, all in white, singing Joyce Kilmer's poem about trees. I think that I shall never see a poem, lovely. No! No? No, I I don't care for that poem. You don't like it? It's too personal. Speaking as a tree, you don't like it. It's immodest. Oh, Lord, what a story. Smeed's man tree debunks Kilmer. It's embarrassing. Uh, You're a hard man to please, Mr. Gwilt. But believe me, when this story gets going, you'll need a dozen scrapbooks. You'll be famous. See you later. John, wouldn't you change your mind, John? It's too late. A little more sun and I'll be well away. I feel a warm tingle now. A sap's running. Is it, dear? It may be the soup you had for lunch. Well, Mrs. Gwilt, time will tell. You go and do your shopping. I must concentrate. Come on, come on, keep moving there, keep moving. Go on, go about your business. Come on, keep moving, keep moving. All day long they've been badgering me. Don't they have any beds to go to? Chief Pettibone is coming to talk to you, John. He'll he'll keep them off. Baboons, apes, grimacing monkeys. No, don't worry, Mr. Wilt. The police will protect you. I'll send a man over to patrol the place until midnight. We'll keep the mob off. Call themselves the pride of creation. Well, if a man wants to plant himself in his own backyard, it's all right with me, I guess, so long as he's alive when he does the plant. Huh. We draw the line at corpses. Isn't that so, Mr. Hoop? That's right, Chief. He has his rights as a taxpayer. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep the gapers away until he gets settled. Uh, Mr. Hoop, you, you can quote me as saying law and order will prevail. I'll send a man right over. Keep, keep your chin up, Mr. Quilt. Remember, law and order will prevail. Well, good night, Mr. Quilt. Uh, they won't bother you anymore. Good night, Mrs. Quilt. Uh, take your time about this. Uh, 
See you in the morning. Oh, hi there. What's the matter with the old willpower? The willpower's all right, Fred. Takes time, that's all. Well, the only change I can see is you got yourself into a swell cold and made a laughing stock of yourself. Time will tell who's the laughing stock, Fred Staines. Well, you have my sympathy, Mrs. Gwilt. I'll leave you to watch your husband blossoming. Good morning, my dear. Two nights and not a twig. You seem disappointed, my dear. Oh, John, how can you say such a thing? I never wanted you to do this. Then why say two nights and not a twig in such a disgusted tone, my dear? I just meant that it should be enough to convince you that it is not going to work. Yes, you are beginning to lose faith in me like all the others. Well, my dear, I, I don't blame you. It, it does get to be trying, especially all the neighbors sneering. Jeering. I don't begrudge you anything I do for you, John. You know that. I never did. Thank you, Jane. Well, I have some pleasant news for you. Your troubles are over. You don't mean you've sprouted. The metamorphosis has begun. The meta... It, it began with the feet. I had no feet now, Jane. Just roots. And what roots? They stretch out and out, deep and deep, far down into the dark earth. I feel immortal. Nothing can shake me. Oh, oh John... John. It's true, oh. it's true, Jane. My, my legs have grown together. Oh. I'm a tree to the waist. I'll take off my blanket and you'll see. There, isn't that wonderful? I have a trunk. Not as big around as it will be, of course, but I feel it. Wood covered with bark. I've lost my fatigue. I'll never walk again. Never walk? It won't be long now. Oh, cheer up, Jane. No more socks to darn. Well, that's one consolation. I hope you won't expect me to keep your leaves sewed on. When they come off, they come off. Look, the tips of my fingers. <gasps> leaves! Little green leaves! I'm in bud. <gasps> oh, dear, it's true then. And now I am a Hindu, married to a tree. Oh, don't take it so hard, Jane. Mr. Hoop's coming. Whatever will he print about us now? Good morning, Mr. Gwilt. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Gwilt. Gosh, oh, fish hooks! He's sprouting! You got, got a phone in the house? Tell you, help yourself, Mr. Hoop, in the hall. Right. Gosh, oh, fish hooks! Gosh, oh, fish hooks! Gosh! And get Bill and Jason down here with their cameras immediately. And clear the front page, yes, all of it! Clear the whole paper! This is the greatest story since the creation. Here's your lead. Smead's man tree sprouts. John Gwilt, the Smead postman who started to will himself into a tree two days ago, broke into little green shoots. All right, all right. Don't push, don't push. Single file. Keep moving, keep moving. Oh, John... There's no end to them. I wish we could send them away. I don't mind, Jane. You said it, Mr. Gwilt. Nothing like being in the public eye. Mr. Gwilt, I, I want you to meet Mr. Bellows here. Joshua Bellows, president of the Smead Chamber of Commerce. Oh, glad to know you, Mr. Gwilt. Oh, you're a remarkable man, sir. Oh, and you'll be the making of Smead. As president of the Chamber of Commerce, I must offer you my sincerest thanks for your public-mindedness. Look at that crowd, Bellows. Hour after hour, they've been filing through Gwilt's garden, and still they comment, and it's all going to waste. Oh, I thought of that, Hoop. Approximately 6,000 people have seen him since the news broke. Now, uh, 6,000 people, say at, uh, hmm, 25 cents apiece. Uh, let me see, hmm... Fifteen hundred dollars! Oh, gone to waste! Gone to waste! Think of what Barnum would have done! Oh, put a tent over him! Advertise him all over the world! Half man, half tree! Have you seen him? Have you seen him? He's alive! 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 Come on over! Come on over! 
instructive and entertaining. See the tree man. Oh, the chance of a lifetime here. The most colossal, the most amazing miracle ever beheld by the eyes of man. Hey, hoop, hoop. Oh, we should make ourselves Gwilk's managers. The very thing. We'll exploit him for all he's worth. Oh, we'll fix the contract up this evening. First thing tomorrow, we'll get him to sign it. Right, Joshua. Caleb Hoops and Joshua Bellows Mantry. Come on over! Oh, there's no end to the possibilities of Gwilt. Oh, we could syndicate this. Sell shares to the public. Oh, this is going to be a juicy bone, all right. Fooling them all, eh, little bird? <laughs> well, we'll soon be great friends. How much better to be a full, spreading, proud, complete tree than an emaciated man without teeth. Long, serene years before me, I shall thrust off the world. Of how busy men are, forever peering and prying, chopping, digging, scraping, shoving, hoisting, tearing down. The whole of human life wasted on desiring and coveting, getting and holding on to rubbish killing for it. How insane! How infinitely sensible are the quiet trees who know nothing of greed. They are rooted in firm ground where they feed on the earth and the sun and the rain. Oh, almost there. A step on it, Hoop. Right, Josh. You got the contract? Oh, you bet I have. All my life I've waited for a chance like this. It means millions, Caleb. Well, we deserve it. We'll know how to spend it, too. I, I wonder if I should get a yacht. Oh, get ten yachts, Caleb. We can make the richest men in the world look like pikers. Am I going to throw a party? Oh, as much money as you can spend. It's like a dream. Well, here we are. We'll have to get organized to protect our interests. Oh, through the alley here. Right. Oh, we'll hire a crew of guides and dress them in leaves. Oh, no sense in being extravagant, Josh. At first, we must watch the costs. Uh, let's see. We'll have to tear this wall down and make room for a museum. Oh, we'll buy all the land around here for two miles. Get the contract. Oh, just one little scrawled signature, and we'll be millionaires. Oh, fish hooks. Oh, uh, where is he? Where is he? Uh, Mr. Gwild. Uh, Mr. Mr. Gwild. 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 Uh. Josh. Josh, that 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 tree it is it it, it can't be. Uh, that that that's 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 where he was standing yesterday. Oh, Caleb, he's done it. All our plans. Oh, well, of all the crooks, of all the double dealing, swindling. John, John, no, it can't be. It can't be, John. Oh, he did it. He. He did it. He's a tree. A beautiful sycamore. A great spreading sycamore. Oh, John. Dear, dear John. Oh, oh. I think that I shall never see Tonight's performance of Mr. Sycamore was directed by Donna Fiore. Sound by Jim Smith and Martin Fossey. Sound effects by Ken Winter and Kathy Stevens. Post-production by Ed Brown. This evening's cast included Jack Stevens as Mr. Oikel, the postmaster, and as the chief of police. John Foster was our postman named John Gwilt, and John's wife, Jane, was played by Kim Drogi. Kevin Steinke was John's neighbor, Fred Staines, a barber, and Mrs. Staines was played by Sarah Elliott. Our newspaper editor, Caleb Hoop, was played by Ken Kidd, and James Williams portrayed the president of the Chamber of Commerce, Joshua Bellows. 
we hope you have enjoyed the Pelican Player's presentation of Mr. Sycamore. <laughs>